What's up everybody? So today I want to bring a video on how I raise up baby guppies. Uh, I think this is just a really fun uh, video to share uh, with you guys. So uh, let's do this thing. So you can see this uh, 15 gallon long here. Should I turn the lights off? That might be better. Uh, I don't know if that's better or not. I'm actually going to turn the lights back on. I think it looks better with the lights on actually. But uh, anyways... 15 gallon long, just looking at the temperature there. It's a tip for you all, just look at your temperature every once in a while. That's why we got the mowers, use them. So, um, how I like to do it, you know, is kind of separate them from the parents and then kind of grow them up so you can kind of see what you got and you can kind of split them up afterwards. Uh, because they kind of, you know, tend to get eaten or whatever, you know, or they get sucked up. So it's just best, any, or you know, they just don't get enough food and they just, you know, don't do as well, uh, in my opinion. So, I mean, you can totally raise them up with the parents, you know, it kind of depends from species, like with the live bears, like, you know, it kind of depends with like, you know, mollies, guppies, platies, you know, they all kind of do differently, uh, you know, sore tails. But I'm kind of speaking from a guppy standpoint, you know, most of them will live, but a few of them just won't make it, you know, because, you know, they'll get eaten or whatever. But I feel like if you remove them, or re or remove the parents, which should be probably an easier way of doing it, um, you'll have better success. Um, so what I recommend doing is actually watching the female and knowing when she's, you know, about to burst. Uh, you know, when she's super fat, you know, she's just ready. Uh, you know, he, she's kind of like, kind of like staying away from all the action, kind of slowing down. That's when you kind of know, you know. And that's when you scoop her up and you plop her in the tank and you let her, uh, you know, do her thing or whatever. Because I feel like when you, you know, when you put them in those breeder boxes, that's just so stressful, in my opinion, anyways. Uh, and I'd recommend putting them in, like, a tank like this or something. Um, but, you know, you don't want to do this too early because the female can actually, uh, if she gets stressed, she can actually um, give birth premature and then the babies come out with their egg sacs and they end up not doing well. I've actually had that a few times. Uh, when I did a water change or whatever, and uh, she just uh, let them go. Um, but, you know, so you let them uh, get born in here, and then, um, you know, from a young, young age, you know, you can start kind of, like, identifying who's who, because you don't really want them to crossbreed, unless, you know, that's what you want to do and you don't really care. Uh, like, like myself, I really couldn't really care less. Um, just like honestly, but you know, some people really like, you know, they want to breed certain species and they want to, you know, have them divided. So, you know, you can get multiple tank setups or like a divider and like put like one female in this tank, one female in that tank, or you can just put them all together. Whatever you want to do, um, you know, is up to you. Um, and then, but let's actually go over the tank here and let's see what I do. Um, so, you know, tank, the, you know, tank temperature, they don't really, you know, mind, they, they're very, uh, hardy, they can take a lot of, uh, different, uh, tank water conditions, um, but, you know, a little bit warmer, um, you know, that will help them out, just, uh, get their metabolism going, uh, it, and especially when breeding, too, because that can rear more males, I've heard. So, what I like to do is just kind of keep, like, a messy tank like a clean tank so the water itself is very clean but it's messy like you got kind of you got like dirt and stuff mixed in there that they can just pick at and then of course there's a ton of plants that they can just you know scavenge off of and just take uh, uh, coverage on especially um, you know when they're when they're with the parents if you leave them with the parents duckweed and like floating plants that they can chill in and kind of scavenge off of where the parents can't really like know where they are or whatever I think that's key. Um, and then, of course, you'd want to have the intake covered with something. I just have a ton of duckweed sucked onto it, so that's pretty much helping uh, me out. And these are big enough that they don't really need, uh, you know, a uh, thing over it. And I'm not really hardcore breeding anyway, so, I mean, if a few get sucked in, a few get sucked in. But if you really are, um, you know, really, like, breeding them up well, you want to sell them, you, you want to make a profit, then for sure get, like, some... Uh, Something that will, uh, you know, cover up the intake. Uh, you know, there, there, there's lots of uh, ways to do that. Um, you know, you can get like a sponge or whatever. So, yeah, that, that's kind of what I like to do when uh, breeding guppies up. You can see a whole bunch in here. This camera is not very good, so you can't really see them, but there's like one up there. 
There's probably like 30 or 40 of them in here. There's just a ton. But, uh, yeah, there's a few in there. So, yeah, folks, kind of want to bring this informational video to you. Haven't done one of these in a while. So, yeah, I kind of rambled off and I said a whole bunch of ums. I'm sorry about that. But, uh, yeah, folks, thanks for watching. And uh, let me know what other uh, informational videos you want me to do. Peace out later. Don't forget to hit that like button. And subscribe button, too. Peace. Later.